gamers, quickly, want to mention 50% off right now. 50% off on the main Game Leap website down below. It is only $1.99 per month in the description down below. I'm doing a ton of 7.23 content for you guys, and it's been a lot of fun really trying to figure out the patch myself and bring every single piece of value I can over there that is not on YouTube, and that is a lot of stuff. Really trying to do a lot for you. I even got people like Gamson and Frempo, other creators who are doing a lot as well. So really, it's just a huge combination of different pieces of content that are really will blow your mind. What's up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about my five current best tips for MMR and patch 7.23. These are just uh, either heroes or ideas, movements, items that I think are currently the best in 7.23 and should be abused at the moment. Right, I've been watching a lot of the pro scene lately and some of the things that they're doing just stand out to be by far the most potent strategies of this patch and so I thought I'd have to bring it to you here today. All right, let's jump straight into it. So the first point I want to talk about is boots of travel. Yes, bots. Why are they so important right now? Why do you need to be buying bots on basically like every single hero? Actually, it's it's pretty simple. In fact, the reason is extremely simple. Outposts have been added to the game. They're one of the most, or if not the most important objective to take in Dota right now. Like it gives you a ton of XP as long as you take them over. It allows you to TP to side lanes instead of kills. And those are really the main two important things. And with bots, all of a sudden that becomes five times easier. Why? Well, normal TPs to outposts take six seconds. Boot to travel TPs, take the normal three. And as a result, simply having bots allows you to easily get across the map, obviously giving you all their other benefits, which allows you to have a just a free founding trip whenever you want. You just go back to base and come back to the fight. But most importantly, it lets you just contest outposts. So every single time, let's say it's 24-54, and the opponent is taking your outpost, trying to get the XP, you bots in, you cancel it, and you win your team the XP trade. And all of a sudden, you're just being on the highest impact hero on the map. Not only that, like, it... it really is just simple as okay you have a three second tp and as a result just strictly due to the fact that you have that three second tp you can show up to side lane gigs in addition it might sound like an issue it's like oh well if i rush bots even though people like gh on on tusk have been rushing bots he rushed bots on a tusk i had a sand king on my team rush on bots i've seen um venos are rushing bots every single game that's slightly for a different reason but basically all the same things and yeah it's just like why wouldn't you want bots and finally the last point i want to make about bots is that in this patch small items are less important i'm not saying you shouldn't buy wand i'm not saying you shouldn't buy bracers windlays clarities tangos south that is not what i'm saying you still should buy those and if you're not yet why <laughs> But really, the, the important thing to note here is that due to the fact that you get a lot of jungle items, you can save up slots, meaning bots and, and buying, you know, uh, bots instead of just all these small items is pretty viable considering you can fill in the rest of your slots with actual just jungle items. So I think it has a lot more viability for that reason. Next up on the list, I want to talk about why I think you should be generally picking Flash Farmers mid or just Magnus mid. <laughs> Now, the reason why I think Flash Farmers are generally easier this patch than, like, the Roamers, not saying you can't pick Roamers, like, and Tempo Controllers, you know, Razor is fantastic, even though you could consider him a Flash Farmer, you know, you can run around with Razor, you can run around with, um, a hero like Ember Spirit or Void Spirit and just try to play for kills, it works, it's not like Dota has drastically changed, and, you know, things that worked in the past just all of a sudden are irrelevant, but in particular, I think it's very easy, especially in pubs, to play these Flash Farming mids, because you can just farm up a lot of items for your team, and this is going to become kind of a common thing theme throughout this video at least in the last point that i'm going to be making where just having the ability to clear through the jungle camps is very convenient and useful for this current patch and now the jungle camps might have been shifted around and your farming patterns might be a little bit off and you're trying to gather things together but the thing is like if you get these items you get like whatever tier one items that buff you in any regard whether it's an ocean heart or even if it's just a keen optic and you need some mana regen it's just strong like it just enables you to have this advantage over heroes that are ganking all the time and i'm not saying that gankers shouldn't be farming you know the camps more so than ever gankers should be farming in their downtime right if they don't see any play to be made you should be hitting jungle camps for this exact reason so keep that in mind this is one of my main tips do not waste time jungling is better than ever and i'm not saying like oh you should just hit jungle creeps all game and all of a sudden this this past idea of you should always be pushing in creep waves is irrelevant it's not but what i will say is jungle veno is broken guys so i know i know i've said this in other videos i'm just trying to put it out there a pro team did it i frankly forget which one i know I'm sorry, but the thing is, guys, it's better than ever. But in all seriousness, like, really, if you're a ganking hero, whether you're Pudge, uh, like, Ember, Void Spirit, Puck, it doesn't matter. Make sure you're farming in your downtime, right? When, after you gank bottom, just quickly kill the nearby camp, kill the small camp in particular, and get these items going. Don't be that type of guy who just has 50 CS at 25 minutes and says it's okay because he's 10 and 2, right? It's not okay. 
Next up on the list, I want to talk about Venno. I don't believe I mentioned this in the last video. If I did, I apologize. The thing is, Venno is really, really, really strong right now. I think he's one of the best offlaners in Dota, if not the best right now. And what we've been seeing from a lot of pro teams, specifically when I've been watching uh, Nigma, which is Kuroki's team, they've been picking Venno consistently, and then they pick um, GH, Tusk. And basically, this dual lane is just one of the strongest in Dota. Venno... Like, I don't think there's been necessarily huge changes to Venno. I think the main change he got was just the HP regen thing, where you, you know, do 30% less HP regen to whoever's poison stung, which is useful. But the main thing I noticed is, is sort of his ability just to control these objectives, right? So outposts are a huge deal right now. And as a result of this, being able to just spam Plague Wards or even Techies Mines when Techies was better, he actually just got like hardcore nerfed, which is pretty comical. But when these objectives are coming up, you can kind of set up for them with Plague Wards and it makes the fight extremely easy, which I think it's just nice you know it's really convenient to have and not only that i think because heroes like lifestealer and jug are a bit out of the meta even something of the likes of slark seems a bit out of the meta right now not unpickable definitely pickable but less picked all of a sudden i think venom becomes a lot better because there's less purges that are popular and as a result you can kind of just do really well with this hero in lane as long as you have the likes of a tusk a spear breaker a treant something like that in lane to protect him and allow him to make space in addition if you're picking venom i highly recommend you look up the pro builds and what they go what i will say which combines the first point of this video is that Venomancer buys Boots of Travel. It's a hero that can legitimately rush it because its spells naturally deal damage and you don't need items to deal damage. You simply just need to be running around the map, moving, creating space, and protecting things like outposts and banning runes. So that is why you can rush bots. It's super, super convenient. Oh yeah, and I actually forgot to talk in depth about Magnus mid, so I'm going to do it here now just because it's kind of on the, on the topic of strong heroes. Magnus mid lane is the most obnoxious thing in Dota right now. Aghanim Scepter makes no sense on that hero. It makes Skewer a 4 second cooldown with a lower cast point with no mana cost. It will get nerfed and as a result, use it now. At the time of this video, it is currently that. A 0 mana 4 second cooldown that gives you a ton of HP. Basically at like 15 minutes into the game, you can have 2k HP. The most mobility in Dota. Legitimately, you have the most mobility in Dota and you're just zooming. In addition, you're a mid laner now because of the buffs to your Empower in terms of your regard. Empower didn't get directly buffed, but it doubles on your hero, so technically it's better on Magnus. And yeah, overall, Magnus mid, very, very good, and the Axe is broken. Next up on the list is picking fives and learning how to use fives that buy items. What do I mean by this? I think Nature's Prophet is one of the strongest fives right now, simply because he can take advantage of the fact that you don't have to spend any gold on wars right now, and he's been both buffed multiple times. His right clicks are stronger now, which is a result of his edgy and intelligence buffs of last patch, and now player units are not blocked by Stout Shield. What this means is that Treants cannot be blocked anymore, so all of a sudden, like, this hero has become insane. But what the point is, is that I think fives that use items right now are great, that are particularly good with items, which usually isn't what you think of when you, you think of fives, right? It's like, oh, fives are the heroes that, you know, get sacked and can do things without gold, but that's really not the case anymore. Supporting is extremely easy to do while getting items now, so, like, really there's less of an excuse ever to not being able to gain MMR as a five. Five is just as easy as mid to gain MMR. I, like, I'm, I'm very convinced of this at this point. If you play a hero like Wyvern, Grimstroke, Nature's Prophet, Dazzle, you can get so much farm, it's unbelievable. And as a result, I think you need to start learning, if you are a 5 player, how to use 4 staffs and glimmer capes extremely well. Guys, I don't understand why people don't get this through their heads. Defensive items are the way to actually win team fights the majority of the time. Like, when it's even and you don't know what's going on, the best way to actually win a team fight as these, like, casters, these backline heroes, is to buy defensive items. Because when people try to jump you, if you can kite them out for 4 to 5 seconds, all of a sudden, the fight becomes 10 times easier because your spells come off cooldown, your carry spells come off cooldown, people see the initiators, they react to the backliners, they get on top of them. It's really just a way to play Dota. So if you're a 5 player, you need to start learning how to become brutally effective with Forge Staff and Glimmer Cape and kiting out fights. I see a lot of 5 players right now, I'm not gonna lie guys, including in this patch, that just can't use Forge Staff and Glimmer Cape. Or they just won't click it in fights. They'll click it like 50 or 20 or 30% of the fights. I'm like, I, I, how can you win as a 5 if you can't even click your defensive items? Especially now more than ever, you will definitely have enough gold for these items. So please, learn how to use Forge Staff and Glimmer and buy them almost every single game on any support hero that you're playing because you will have excess gold as of nature of the patch and finally the last and final and the fifth point is to stack camps yes it is that simple i'm going to be ending a video on that topic that is that simple 
items exist. Jungle items exist, and if you want to kick the RNG out of the jungle items, you gotta make stacks to make it less RNG based, right? The more creeps you have, the more chance, the larger chance you have to get the jungle items. So please, if you're a five player and you're in the landing stage, stack the small camp. The stack in the small camp is like the godsend of this patch, in my opinion. It allows you to double pull, which is, you know, just broken in solo queue. I can't stress this enough to any of you five players. Learn how to stack pull. And then after that, you when you kill it, starting from the seven minute mark now, you can start getting items. It's that good. It's that good. You kill a bunch of like uh, cobalts and you just have a gajillion percent chance to get items. It's so good. Also, you can be stacking things like agents, large camps, you get the extra gold. Stacking is so good right now, right? You split the gold, you can even sap XP, you can take the lane when your cores are farming it, or as a core player, you can, you know, get extra items for yourself. It is unbelievably good. It really, really is, and it's something I need to start working on because personally, guys, as a support and as a core player, it's something I lack on. When I'm flash farming as an elk, I'll have no problem focusing on stacks or, or you know, as an AM or something like that, but for the most part, I struggle with this and it's something I'm going to be working on because I see the, the value in it of this patch and I wanted to say it just so everyone out there hears it too. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video of the five best current tips for gaining MMR in 7.23, leave a like on the video. I appreciate it as always. Of course, it's been your boy Speed and I'm out. Peace. What's up everyone, Speed here. Just want to mention, over on the main Game Leap website, we have a 50% off sale going on right now, so it is only $1.99 per month. That's it, that's it, it's so cheap. And I'm doing a ton of 7.23 content over there, so if you feel like YouTube isn't doing it for you, or you need things more niche and specific that can help you in your in your, your very own role, I recommend you go check it out, right? It's 50% off, literally, it's a Black Friday sale, it's not going to get much better than this, actually, it, it probably never will. So click the link down in the description below and hopefully I'll see you there.